Hey everyone, welcome back to Here's the News. Five major news items for you today. I mean, we got things, everything from sales data in Japan to Square Enix doing its own Nintendo Direct style presentation today, literally called Square Enix Presents. We got Sony buying Evo of all things, bunch of crazy stuff, including potential specs for the Nintendo Switch Pro that sound completely unbelievable until you consider who is saying it and why they would know this information. All right, before we get into that, we are giving away a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card or a $100 PlayStation or Xbox gift card. It'll be user choice on that. We're also giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two additional $20 Nintendo Switch Xbox or PlayStation gift cards for four total winners to enter down in the description or the pinned comment. Let's just get right into the news. Uh, right away, we got Japan sales data in for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, etc. Really, Switch dominates. So here's the top 10 software. And as you're seeing here, the number one selling software for last week was Mario 3D World plus Bowser Fury with 41,734 units. It has now crossed half a million units in Japan. Nintendo just continues to kill it. They literally own the entire top 10. There's one new game in there. I'm not going to read through the whole list. You see it on screen. Honestly, uh, this is just par for the course for Nintendo. But what's interesting is the Nintendo Switch, while it still leads in hardware sales at 72,610 units, actually saw a 17,000 decrease week over week, whereas PlayStation 5 at number two sold 37,851 units, which is a 15,000 increase week over week. They are still selling out of the PlayStation 5, just like they are everywhere else in the world. As many units as they can get out, they're just putting more and more units into Japan. So we could see PlayStation 5 units continue to rise and potentially threaten Switch. Or at least you would think that if it wasn't for the fact that Monster Hunter Rise comes out this month, literally next week. So yeah, sales are about to explode for Switch all over again. Maybe even another 150, 200k week or something. I don't know. It's going to be insane because Monster Hunter is that big of a deal. So it's just interesting to see what's happening. PlayStation 5 is clearly not out of demand in Japan. Uh, Xbox is somewhere on the sales list as well. Uh, Xbox Series X under a thousand units, but I think over 700, which is actually pretty good for an Xbox platform. But anyways, uh, let's get into our next story, which is Square Enix Presents. Yes, folks, Square Enix did their own Nintendo Direct. And the big thing here is they promised there will be future Square Enix Presents this year. So this is one of my, my maybe two or three of these bad boys. Uh, and first up, they kicked off the whole show with Outriders. Yes, folks, Outriders that comes out on April 1st on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X along with PC and Google Stadia on PC releasing on Steam and Epic Game Store. So lots of options to buy this game, unfortunately not on Switch. It is a co-op RPG shooter, uh, and it's by the makers of Bullet Storming Gears of War. So it has a good team behind it. Uh, we'll have to see how well this game turns out. It is one of the biggest third-party launches to start this year, uh, and it's a new IP. New IPs are always exciting when they come from anyone, let alone a AAA developer. So we'll have to see how this turns out. Hopefully, uh, it can find the kind of sales that Bullet Storm was unable to find in the past, but Gears of War did. Maybe this will be able to pull off a more Gears of War-style consistent sales pace. Um, we'll see. I haven't played the game, so I don't know if it's even worth your money. But, uh, hey, it's coming, and it's coming soon. The next uh, story from the Square Enix Presents recap comes from the 25th anniversary of Tomb Raider. That's right, Laura Croft has turned 25 years old. She is officially the same age I was when I met my fiancé a decade ago. And I was playing, like, Tomb Raider games when I was 10. Uh, I'm old, all right? <laughs> Uh, that being said, uh, they announced a bunch of stuff, including some reconfirming things that have been previously announced. Uh, there's a new animated show coming to Netflix. There's a new live action movie in the works with the same actress who was in the last one. Uh, they have crossover content in Ghost Recon Breakpoint and War of the Visions in Final Fantasy Break Exvius. Uh, Tomb Raider Cookbook is coming out. 
Also, the big announcement today was a Tomb Raider Definitive Survivor Trilogy Edition. That's right, say that five times fast. Uh, has arrived today, digital only. It is a collection of all three of the rebooted Tomb Raider games, uh, including all DLC. It's available right now. Again, digital only on your PlayStation and Xboxes and PCs out there. It looks like it's about 20 bucks, so it's a really good price if you haven't played any of the games. It includes all that DLC and stuff. That's awesome awesome uh also we all know that laura croft was added to fortnite or if you didn't now you do well they're also going to be adding croft manor later to creative mode so that should be really really interesting uh they did say there's going to be more announcements for the 25th anniversary coming later this year hopefully a new like mainline tomb raider game would be quite interesting or like a remaster of the old ones i don't know uh, there's a lot they could have in the works, so we'll see what happens. Next up, Square Enix Montreal announced their new game they're working on called Hitman Sniper Assassins. We don't know anything about it. It's just Hitman. Um, multiplayer, maybe? I, 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 I don't know. I honestly have no idea what this game is. They didn't give much information. Uh, next up, Crystal Dynamics showed off their new Avengers DLC called Future Imperfect, which is about Hawkeye. It's free DLC. Plus, they feature the free upgrade for Next Gem, which includes 4K, 60 FPS, and improved destructive destructions in the environments. Uh, they also announced, and this was a big announcement today, Black Panther War for Wakanda expansion uh, is coming later this year. That'll obviously be a paid expansion. Now, I know Marvel's Avengers, the game, has had quite a bit of controversy around how the game was announced and then what it turned out to be and how they delivered it. And I don't know. Um, I actually thought the game was actually pretty good, but I also didn't pay attention to the media cycle on it. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't know how many people are still playing, but it's there. Obviously they're trying to take advantage of the fact that Marvel is still a massive deal in media. Uh, next up, the, there was a new Balin Wonderland trailer. This is a game coming to Switch, but also coming to all other platforms. Uh, there has a demo out as well that did not get very well received. They claim they made some improvements based off demo feedback, but they couldn't fix some things because it would fundamentally change what the game is. Uh, it comes out March 26th, and honestly, um, you're seeing the trailer right now. I think it looks uh, nice. It looks promising. But the demo really soured some people. So we'll, we'll see if the final game can uh, really impress. Uh, moving on, Life is Strange gets a new game. It's called Life is Strange True Colors. It's coming out on September 10th. It looks really, really good. Life is Strange is a massive story-heavy game. Uh, there's two prior games as well called Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm. They're actually coming out in a remastered collection uh, later this fall that's going to have improved visuals, uh, 4K likely, all that jazz. Uh, there's also going to be um, some live, uh, some, some new animations in those games. But in the new one, the True Colors game, they actually went with live motion capture, which is always best. Uh, so it's going to be one of the most realistic in terms of how the characters move. Uh, yeah, basically Life is Strange is just becoming a bigger and bigger deal. Uh, so that's really, really great. And then they ended the show with what I thought we all anticipated, and that was a new look at Project Athea. It's not vaporware, folks. It's real. Of course it is. Coming to PlayStation 5 and PC. Uh, they unveiled it with what could be best described as a um, title reveal. Calling it Forspoken. And there was a giant dragon because dragons are awesome. So it's coming in 2022. So console exclusive to PlayStation 5 and PC. Really exciting. As always, PC gamers are starting to see the reaping of the benefits now. As a lot, you know, all Xbox games come to PC now. Most PlayStation 5 exclusives are coming to PC. It's a good time to be a PC gamer, let me tell you. Well, sort of. Outside of the fact you can't really build a PC right now. That part sucks. All right, moving on. Sony and some company I've never heard of called RTS. When I think RTS, I think real-time strategy. But whatever. Sony and RTS together have co-purchased evo yeah the fighting game tournament and they announced that sony will not be restricting them to just sony platforms but here's the thing xbox also said that like all bethesda games would be a case-by-case -case basis on if it comes out on playstation and then the purchase was finalized and they say yeah outside of the currently contractually obligated games nothing's going to playstation it's all coming exclusively to game pass and game pass platforms playstation is not a game pass platform 
So I don't know how much you could believe when you're told this stuff. I don't think it's going to affect things this year. There is going to be an Evo online event in August. I don't think any of this is going to impact that. But I do think there's a potential that future in-person events are going to be heavily leaning towards PlayStation versions of fighting games and fighting games on PlayStation platforms. Let's just be honest here. Sony didn't buy Evo to not advertise Sony. Sony didn't buy Evo to not advertise PlayStation. So... I mean, let's just let's just be real with what's happening. Yes, PlayStation has sponsored Evo in the past. Difference between a sponsorship and, hey, we own this event. Also, for Smash fans out there, Nintendo already has major issues with the Melee and Ultimate community. I'm not going to get into all that drama. It goes back years. Uh, Nintendo themselves might have already been trying to pull Smash out of these events. Nintendo is also not super supportive of the fighting community anyways. So seeing Smash get dropped out of Evo would suck. But also, you think Sony cares? I'm pretty sure they don't give two flying hoots. All right, moving on. Um, the next story is actually about... This is this is big. Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal dropped a surprise trailer yesterday for The Ancient Gods Part 2. And the biggest surprise of that DLC is that it comes today. It's here today. They didn't give us like any run-up. It's here today. We get to complete hell. We get to finally... And the Hell Saga in Doom. Supposedly, that's what this DLC does. I don't know. I have it on Game Pass on Series X. I also have it on Switch. At some point tonight, I'll probably dive into it a little bit. But for right now, it's out now. Really cool surprise drop. Good on them. Good on uh, the, the you know Doom Eternal id software. Uh, really great to see them just literally drop this from the sky on us. Um, I like surprises like this, especially with DLC. I don't feel like you need you know months and months of build up for DLC. Announce and release. Announce and release. It works. All right, this last story, I know a lot of you guys have already jumped to this story. Didn't see the rest of Here's the News. How dare you? Shame on you. But it's okay. I understand. This is the story that keeps on giving so far in 2021. And that is the Switch Pro. And no, I'm not just calling it the Switch Pro as some you know out there moniker. The people talking about this called it the Switch Pro themselves. Although they're not saying that's what it's called, that's how they're referencing it. So we're going to reference it the way they do because all of this information comes from Bloomberg. But it doesn't just come from another Takahashi Machizuki public article. Oh, no, no, no. It comes from an investor's article that you need to be an actual investor to get access to, which means you, me, and the rest of you guys out there can't actually access. It's through the Blinksy service. Uh, you have to apply for it, and there's like a really expensive fee, and I applied for it, and I couldn't get access as a YouTuber so it is what it is. But thankfully, some people on Reddit, which, of course, hello, Wall Street Bets is on Reddit, have access to this because they obviously are gathering all the possible information they can for investment purposes. And they summarize the article. And, oh, boy, is there a lot in here. There's price points. There's release dates. There's um, specs or at least an idea of what the specs could be to a degree, kind of, sort of. Let's, oh, let's talk about it. So, First up, they state plainly and clearly the Switch Pro is releasing this holiday, period. It's coming this holiday. They're not even questioning it. They're not saying, oh, our sources are saying, no, they're just saying it's coming this holiday. That's what Bloomberg is reporting. Uh, hardware sales overall sh for Switch will either be flat or slightly increased in the current fiscal year. Uh, so, yeah, they don't think Switch sales are, are, are diving off a cliff. We talked about this in the latest episode of the podcast. Be sure to click up here uh, where Bloomberg also you know, previously said, hey, look, we don't think these analysts are right. Sales are either going to be the same as last year or they're going to be even higher. Uh, and what they are saying is Switch Pro sales in particular will be higher at launch than PlayStation 4 Pro sales. PlayStation 4 Pro sales were at 2 million, so they're saying Switch Pro is going to sell more than that during launch month. Okay, that's kind of a prediction. I'll give them that. It's probably true as long as Switch can maintain its popularity, which I don't think it's going to slow down with Monster Hunter Rise, new Pokemon Snap. Uh, Mario Golf, Skyward. So I think they're going to be pretty good for the first half of the year. We'll see what happens for the second. Now, what's interesting here is they're saying launch quarter, September to December, they expect the Switch family of systems, which includes the Pro, to sell 12 million units. That's a lot of units. That's what they sold last holiday. They're saying, look, it's not going to drop, so investors don't sell right now. Uh, they're also saying um, that Zelda is likely going to be a launch game. They are hearing internally that Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is a launch game. 
So think about launching this holiday. Zelda's a launch game. Ergo, Breath of the Wild 2 is a major holiday game for Nintendo this year. That's according to Bloomberg. Now, they're not confirming that, but they're saying they're hearing that. So that is a plan currently that they, they are hearing is internally happening at Nintendo. There's also going to be a bevy of other games releasing around the release slate of it. So probably a major game in December, a major game back in October, no, no, whatever. They're, 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 we obviously know Pokemon, uh, uh, what is it? Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, right? Those games are coming out during this time period. So, hey, you never really know. Um, they're just saying there's going to be, a, you know, it could be third-party games, third-party exclusive games that, that, that are only on this pro model. And why would there be third-party exclusive games, especially at launch, when there isn't an install audience yet for it? Well, let's just say they give us an idea of the price and the performance. So first, let's start with the price. They're saying it's going to be priced 20% higher than the current Switch, which isn't exact, but it, it pretty much rounds around $350. So $350 USD is what they're expecting the price point to be. But based on the specs, I feel like that's $50 cheaper than it should be. I feel like this should be a $399 system. And you want to know why? They're saying the performance of this revision, the performance, not sales performance, they're saying the actual graphical performance, and I confirmed it with the Redditor, that is what they mean. They're not talking about sales. It's not about sales data. They're talking about actual console performance is expected from their sources, which includes developers with dev kits, to be in line with a PlayStation 4 Pro and an Xbox Series X. Let's, let's pause that for a moment. There's two ways to read this because the article apparently does not go more in depth. You can either read this as Nintendo's giving you a PlayStation 4 Pro in your pocket. Sort of. Switch doesn't exactly perfectly fit in everyone's pockets. But you know what I'm saying? They're making PlayStation 4 Pro portable. That would be huge. Or what they're saying is, and this is just an interpretation, the leap from Switch to Switch Pro will be equivalent to the leap from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 4 Pro or equivalent from Xbox One to Xbox One. One X. Now, the Xbox One X leap was huge because it went from 1.4 teraflops of floating point, you know, GPU performance to six teraflops in the Xbox One X. It was a rather big GPU bump. Equivalent for that, you know, if if you kind of look at the the PlayStation 4 Pro wasn't quite as big of a leap, but if you kind of look at you know somewhere ballpark between them, you're looking at a Nintendo Switch that currently at dock is just under one teraflop to end up being two, three, maybe four teraflops while docked, maybe two, two and a half teraflops in handheld. That is a mass. That's two, three x the current Switch. I'm just putting that out there. This is what Bloomberg is saying. That's a massive leap for a mid gen refresh, which yeah, Xbox One X was a massive leap for a mid-gen refresh that never got fully taken advantage of because games were forced to have to be on the original Xbox One. I'm just saying that that's huge. This doesn't, you know, this obviously, they reiterate it. It will have 4K output. They reiterate the 720p, 7-inch OLED panel, confirming that this is all the one unit, the Switch Pro unit they are talking about is the one with the 7-inch uh, panel. I know this kind of goes against some of the speculation out there that there's going to be a Switch XL that isn't upgraded specs, that is still a Tiger X1 and has a bigger screen with the OLED panel. I get it. It goes against that. But Bloomberg's the source on the OLED panel in the first place. And if they're linking the two together, they're saying it's in the upgraded power switch. And they're saying the power is going to be 2, 3x the current switch. I don't know what to say other than I hope that they're right because that's what I want the Switch Pro to be. It kind of sounds like Bloomberg is telling me everything that Nintendo Prime has wanted the Switch Pro to be, it's going to be. Even cheaper than I thought it would be too. We'll have to wait and find out. Obviously, if it's coming this holiday, you would presume Nintendo will be announcing it at some point this summer. Anyways, now that's it. That's the end of Here's the News today. Uh, we're going to do a little additional conversation here. we talk about why Here's the News wasn't here the last few days and what's been going on for people who haven't been updated and then some feedback from you guys. One, I want feedback on Here's the News. You guys let me know uh, if you like Here's the News. Uh, if you like my presentation, if you like what I've done with how I'm bringing this news to you, let me know if you like the style I'm doing with the lens where I have a bokeh effect behind me. I don't have to do that. I have a lens that came with the camera that I could use that does not put bokeh. It just makes everything pretty much seem like everything's in focus. Uh, also, um, 
but I, I kind of like the bokeh, so I, I'm impartial to it, but I, I kind of want to know what you guys think about the bokeh effect on the background. It's a natural bokeh effect. It's not added in editing. Um, it's literally part of the lens that I bought. Now, I also want feedback on what you guys think of the quality of the video. This is a 4K 60 FPS video. The first, here's the news to be in 4K 60, because this camera can record 4K 60. Yes, folks, the reason we haven't had a here's the news over the last three days, even though I started this series last week, last Thursday, is because my kids broke my Lumex G7, which I don't even know where it is right now. It's broken. I let my kids play with it. Got chucked against a wall. One of my kids got angry. It was just a whole big thing, um, and it was kind of sad. But the benefit of it is I upgraded cameras to the Lumix G9, uh, which came out two years. It's actually a camera from 2017, but it still sells for almost $1,000. So it's not a cheap camera, but it's also not one of those top tier cameras as well. Uh, but one thing that's great about this camera is it has amazing autofocus. Um, it makes the Lumix G7 look like hot garbage in comparison. So throughout this video, I should have never went out of focus and you should have never saw things go in and out from dark to light, dark to light, like we've seen with the prior camera, because this camera is just that much better. Despite the fact that the internal, uh, sensor itself is technically exactly the same. It's the exact same internal sensor, but there's additional shutter speed and a whole bunch of other crazy features on this G9 that you guys will probably never hear about because I'm just going to use them and you guys will just enjoy the benefits of better video quality. You should be able to see all the hairs now on my face, including all these gray ones here to show you just how old I really am. I don't think I could fool anyone anymore. The only thing we get too many people are going in the comments like, man, Nate, you look good. What are you, 22? Hmm. I don't think I can get away with those 22 year old remarks anymore, uh, but that's okay. I'm, I'm just glad to bring a higher quality video to you, especially for those people out there that are rocking 4K phones, 4K tablets, 4K TVs, so you can get a better experience. No, not all of my content is going to be in 4K. For now, the Nintendo Prime podcast is going to be in 1440p uh, because there's an, an issue uh, where I can't quite get it to record long enough to pull off a 4k which is fine i'm working with panasonic right now to fix some issues with the camera uh for the podcast but literally panasonic's in my dms talking to me about it uh so we will have that sorted out but it's not it's still going to be a 1440p i uh, think for the podcast uh but 4k i think for pretty much everything else i do uh moving forward because that's what i want to do and that's what people are enjoying and i know switch isn't 4k but switch pro might be so why not jump the gun and be one of the few Nintendo channels out there producing 4K60 content? Why? Because I can. Also, hopefully the audio is better. I got a different audio set up. You guys can't really see it. It's just off camera, but I'll zoom it up a little bit. Look, here's my mic. Look how, look how close this is to me. It's very close. It's on a boom arm. A lot to talk about, uh, but I mostly want to know your feedback on the camera, on the quality, on the show, uh, and on the audio because I've been working very hard and invested quite a bit of money uh some of it unintentional because I didn't plan for my prior camera to get broken. But since it is, I've invested something like over two grand into making the podcast and making my videos look better now over the last few weeks. I hope it was worth it. That's all I could say. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video.